Welcome to the Three Edge Week in Review for the week of February 26th. I'm Fritz Foltz, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Three Edge, and joining me here once again today is Steve Cucchiaro, CEO and Chief Investment Officer here at Three Edge Asset Management. Today, Steve and I will be discussing three different scenarios that could potentially move markets in the months ahead. As the U.S. equity markets continue to climb higher, there is a good deal of uncertainty and unease, I would say, about how long this equity market rally may last and what may come next. And so Steve and I will dig into some potential scenarios. Meanwhile, there was some good news on the inflation front uh, this week with the release of the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, which is referred to as the personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index, which is a mouthful, and the Fed looks at the core PCE, which excludes food and energy. And that number increased by 2.8% year over year in January, compared to a slightly higher number of 2.9% increase in December. And this was spot on the consensus estimate. And since there wasn't a negative inflation surprise, investors were relieved. And now it seemed to be coalescing perhaps around the narrative that the Fed could begin to cut short-term interest rates, perhaps around the June FOMC meeting. Inflation report gave another boost to stocks and bonds. And meanwhile, Bitcoin rose above $61,000. And of course, what comes next for the economy and the markets will depend on different factors, including whether inflation continues to ratchet down towards the 2% target and also the growing concerns about geopolitical tensions and particularly the conflict in the Middle East and whether that could expand, thereby pushing oil prices higher and spiking inflation higher. So Steve, title of the video is three scenarios that could move markets. So let's get to it. And why don't you perhaps summarize our thinking about these three different potential scenarios that could play out in the months ahead? Well, Fritz, the reason for different scenarios, especially at this time, is because the future direction will depend on decisions that the monetary and fiscal authorities have yet to make. We've got Fed meetings in March and May that will be very influential and market impactful. The pace of government stimulus and deficit spending has largely offset a lot of the monetary tightening that we've seen over the last several months. And so government uh, administration and Congress, uh, decisions they make, will have a role in seeing how much this fiscal stimulus continues or how much it starts to fade away and not offset the monetary tightening. Mm-hmm. So this is very important. I want to refer to the slide that shows the three major scenarios. Uh, one we'll call stronger than expected economic growth. The second we'll call a, a soft landing. And the third we'll call credit contraction, which leads to a hard landing. Excellent. All right. So now let's examine each of those in a bit more detail and the implication for each of these scenarios in terms of how they could impact the markets differently. So if we have stronger than expected growth, and so far there are signs that this is what's been happening, it could continue, then uh, the good news is that that's very strong for the economy. But The bad news is that it might make the Fed push further into the future any rate cuts, and we'd be living with interest rates that are higher for longer. And this would be detrimental to companies that are really counting on refinancing their debt because they're hoping for lower interest rates in the refinancing, and now that might not be the case. On the other hand, companies with really strong balance sheets that can generate their own cash internally through their own growth Uh, could continue to thrive and continue to do very well in scenario one. Scenario two, soft landing. uh, This is sometimes thought of as the Goldilocks scenario, which everything works perfectly. The Fed times everything just right. Inflation comes down. Uh, Some people call that immaculate disinflation. It comes right down to target. The Fed can lower rates before anything bad happens to the economy. Uh, It starts to weaken the dollar as rates come down. This could be great news for some of the laggards in the equity market, small cap, value, emerging markets. These could all start to perform better. And then scenario three, uh, which is the most concerning, is the credit contraction, where monetary tightening always operates with a large and variable lag. And by some measures, uh, we're not even to the average lag point yet where we're going to see the full force of the monetary tightening that's already happened. And should that hit in the next few months at the same time the fiscal stimulus 
works itself away and the reverse repos, which are a form of fiscal stimulus that's been helping, but they're starting to wind down now. Uh, if that all happens, we could have a hard landing. Uh, and in a credit contraction, equities uh, are unfavorable. Uh, but what might work in, in a hard landing would be uh, a reserve of U.S. treasuries. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if it's a, a bad economy and a hard landing, but with inflation still running high, then tips or inflation protected securities, treasury inflation protected securities will protect clients very, very well. And if it's a hard landing such that the Fed has to come in and do more quantitative easing or more monetary stimulus to try to rescue the economy, chances are by that time it's too late, but all that monetary stimulus will uh, create monetary inflation, which will be very, very good for gold. Excellent. All right. So as always, my final question is based on what we've discussed here today about these three potential scenarios, how might investors think about positioning their investment portfolios to deal what seems to me to be a pretty high degree of uncertainty in, in, in the case of where we go from here? So investors have two basic choices right now, whether they realize it or not. One is that they pick a scenario, they feel very confident that's what's going to happen, and they gamble all their funds on that one scenario, and they pick all the investments that really cater to that one particular scenario. Choice number two is that an investor says, well, there are some key decisions that will be made soon that will help determine which of these scenarios will play out. But we, have, we don't know what those decisions are going to be yet. And even the Fed and the government, they don't even know yet exactly what they're going to do. So, so right now, we'll make sure that in our portfolio, we have assets that can do well for each of these three scenarios. And then as it becomes more clear which path we're going down, we can begin to refine and revise our portfolio allocations to really favor that particular scenario. And if I want to use a sailing analogy, a lot of times I compare my experience in racing sailboats with investing. There are a lot of analogous uh, thoughts that, that go, go pretty far. And one is that before a race, you might look up the course and try to decide ahead of time which side of the course has the most favorable win. Is it the left side of the course or the right side of the course? And sometimes it's really obvious based on your experience, based on your observations, based on your knowledge, which side of the course might be favored. And by going there, you can get an advantage on your competitors. Sometimes you look up and it's not obvious at all. And uh, there are systems, the, the way the weather system would play out, that could favor one or the other, but it's not obvious now. It'll be obvious a little bit later in the race. And so a uh, strategy I like to do is not commit all the way one way or the other, but stay more in the middle, keep watching very carefully how the situation is playing out. And then when it's more obvious and you have more conviction, start to play out one favorite side or the other. And uh, if you don't do that, and if you pick a side, it happens to be the wrong side, you could be dead last place and it could be really, really hard to get back in the game. So I think the analogy carries over nicely to investing. And I think this is a time where decisions have yet to be made that will be made soon that will have a big impact on which of these scenarios plays out. So um, that's what our recommendation is at this time. Excellent. Great. Thank you for your insight. I love the analogy with, uh, with sailing as well. Uh, and also, uh, our discussion today reminded me of one of our favorite, uh, one of the favorite quotes uh, in terms of investing. It was by Nassim Taleb, who said, invest in preparedness, not in prediction. And I came across this quote again, reading Morgan Housel's latest book, Same as Ever, A Guide to What Never Changes, which I highly recommend to our listeners. So that will do it for Steve and me for this week. I will be back next week with Eric Beagleis, and Director of Research and Deputy Chief Investment Officer here at 3Edge with the March edition of the 3Edge View from the Edge. As a reminder, all our videos always available on our 3Edge YouTube channel and if you know someone who you think might enjoy and benefit from our weekly videos, please feel free to share them with them. So until next time, on behalf of Steve and everyone here at 3Edge, thanks for listening.